Um, to the word of the Lord this morning. This is the last message in our series, uh, our anniversary series, the anniversary theme that I believe with all of my heart the Lord uh, gave to us, put on Pastor Renee's heart. And um, so we're going to finish up with it today. And some of you are probably thinking, well, how are we going to finish it up? Because we've already had be joyful in hope. We've already had be patient in affliction. We've already had be faithful in prayer. And we did that last week. So it was a bit of a, a stretch for me um, as I was preparing and praying this week because I thought, Lord, I don't want to re-preach and I don't want to use the sa- you know all the same verses again. What do you have to say to us as we put it together? And so we're going to look this morning and the Lord has, he's been faithful to give a word to us as individuals and a word for us as a church on this 28th anniversary. And so, Lord, this morning, as we turn to your word, we ask that you would give us ears to hear and hearts to respond to the word that you are speaking to us this day. May it be your word, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So here we are, 28th anniversary, celebrating, and um, we've celebrated with worship, we've celebrated with music, we've celebrated with giving, with testimonies, with remembrances, and now we want to celebrate with his word. And so we look again at Romans 12, 12, and let's read it together. This is our theme, and it's a wonderful passage. Shall we read together? Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Amen. Amen. So as we look back at God's faithfulness and we look ahead ahead at what is yet unknown, um, we come to this theme for us that I do believe is from the Lord. And there are a lot of things that we don't know this morning, but there are some things that we know for sure. In the, in the church year ahead, in the church year ahead, you are going to have some times of great joy in this year. In the church year ahead, you are going to be disappointed. In the church year ahead, we're going to have some troubles that we didn't expect and we won't know how to face. All of these things are certain. But what is also certain is this. God is going to be with us through his spirit and through his word and we're going to make it through to our 29th anniversary unless Jesus comes before then. And that would be okay. But if he is not, if he tarries his coming in another year, for another year, God is going to be faithful to us. And so we look at these things together. God in his love is going to equip us to go through whatever is ahead victoriously by giving us hope so that we may rejoice by developing patience in all of our troubles and by helping us to pray faithfully so that all he has promised for us, we will attain in the year ahead. And so we want to look this morning for just a little while. We're going to go through each one of these very briefly and then we're going to look at a a poster child for each one of these things. You know, we always have, here's the example for this, or a poster child for this. So we're going to look at the, a poster child uh, for joyful and hope. We're going to talk just a little bit more about hope, and we're going to look at each one of these things, and we're going to go pretty quickly, and I'm not going to read all the scriptures. So if you say, oh, so fast, Pastor Jennifer, the great thing is we have a YouTube channel, and we have a Facebook page, and you can listen to it all again and get the notes. So let's talk about joyful and hope, this first one. Um, I don't know about you, but I have known people before who have contemplated suicide or have attempted suicide. And I wouldn't be surprised that in a church this size, there are those among us who have faced the same thing and who may even have tried it before. And when I have talked with people who have, have, con- have thought about this or have really considered it or tried it, tr- tr- attempted, but were saved from it and were, fa- were found and were, were saved before, um, before death, almost always there is one theme, and the theme is, I have no hope for my life. I don't think it's going to get any better. I don't think it's going to get any better. 
And if you and I look at the world around us, we know that this is something that so many people feel. Here in Hong Kong, as we have gone through the crisis, as we're going through what's going on in Hong Kong, there are people already that have taken their lives through this process, that we, that through these, these, the protests and things, because they think it's, there's no hope for Hong Kong. It's not going to change. This is the way that it is. And what I want to say to us this morning, as we think about being joyful in hope, I want to say this, some of you are not that far. I think some of you are this morning. And God to us this morning says, be joyful in hope. And why does he say that to us? I want to remind you just very quickly of these things. Romans 15, 13, may the God of hope, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. This year ahead, whatever you face, you may have hope. Why? Because you are connected to the source of hope. I was going to get a battery and something else too, and I just ran out of time. But you know, some of us have uh, little electronics that we are battery operated. And we can put the battery in, but the battery, where, the battery, we use it up after a while, right? But then we've got some electronics that have uh, uh, a direct current or alternating current as well. And you can plug it into the wall and the source is going to keep on. You're going to have electricity, aren't you? The battery, the, the battery's not going to run out. It's not going to stop. Why? Because you're plugged into the source. You're plugged into the source. And when you're plugged into the source... There is an infinite supply. That's what I want to say to us today. If, if you get that, that thought, there's an infinite supply. It is unending. Other things, if we plug in to other things and we hope that we will get hope from this, we hope that we will have a future in this, I promise you, if it is not God, it will disappoint. If it is not God, it will grow weak. If it is not God, you will have a brownout or a blackout <laughs> at some point. But if it's God, he's the source of all hope, and you'll never run out. I want to ask you a question this morning. How much hope do you need to make your life better? I mean, real hope. Not hope so hope, but no so hope, right? Remember, we talked about this. Not hope so, but no so. How much do you need? Just a little bit? Or would you like a little bit more? Look at this verse. What does it say? So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you and I are plugged into God, we may overflow with hope. Overflow with hope. There will be enough. There will be enough. And then look at Jeremiah 29, 11. And we talked about this the first week, but it's such a good reminder. And somebody mentioned it this morning as well. What does it say? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for good, not for harm. Plans to give you hope and a future. The problem is sometimes you and I have our own ideas and we think, well, this is what life is going to be like. Well, this is how my future is going to be. Or you're struggling with something right now and you don't see an answer for it and you are drowning in hopelessness. And what I want to say to you this morning is there is a God who is bigger than your circumstances. There is a God who is bigger than your problem. And that God says to you this morning, I have plans for you, and they are plans that include hope and a future. You and I believe too often the lie of the enemy who wants to destroy us. This morning, if you are feeling hopeless, this morning, if you are feeling, I don't know what I'm going to do, there's no answer, it's going to my life, it's not going to get better, this is just the way it is. I want to say something to you this morning. That is a lie, and it's not from God. It's from the devil who wants you to drown in your hopelessness. Here is what God says instead. God says, 
I know the plans I have for you. They're to give you future. They're to give you a hope. And so this morning, if you are believing a lie, it's a lie that things aren't going to get better. I urge you this morning to gird yourself up, go to the word of God, get plugged into God and say, God, I reject the lie of the enemy that my life, that my situation is just going to get worse and worse. There's no hope because you have a plan for me. Don't you think that the plan of the enemy is greater than the lie, the, the plan of God, sorry, that the plan of God is greater than the lie of the enemy in your life? It surely is. He is defeated. And so this morning, I want you to be encouraged. He says, I have a plan for you, and it's to give you hope and a future. Don't buy the enemy's lie. Don't buy the enemy's lie this morning. And then Romans 5, 1 and 2 and verse 6. I included this, and I'm not going to read it all, but this has been one of our theme passages as we've gone through this because remember what we said? We have hope because of what God has already done. So that gives us a foundation. It's not blind hope. It's not, oh, well, I hope, I, I hope, I hope. No, God has already shown us through our Lord Jesus Christ that he can be counted on, that he's a good God, that when you and I were far from him, God already had a plan. Remember before you knew Jesus, what a mess your life was? Remember? And if some of you say, my life's really a mess right now, you need to get Jesus in the middle of your life. You need to get Jesus in the middle of your life. God had a plan for our lives when our lives were a mess. God had a love for us when we hated him and when we were far from him. If that is the case, we can surely trust him as the God of hope, to give us hope and to bless us through God. That's the foundation. It's not a hope so. It's not a blind hope. It is, he has already done this, therefore, we've got something to stand on. Amen? Amen. 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 It's not, we're not floating on clouds or standing in the air. We're on God and his hope, it's secure. We can count on him because of everything he has done for us. Who's our poster child for hope? Our poster child for hope is Abraham. Hang on. And some of you will say, but isn't he the father of faith? He, he's also a good poster child for hope as well. Let's look at it really quickly. All of us know the story of, of uh, Abraham or Abram at this time because he's call, before he's called, his name is changed. But I'm just going to go in Abram or Abraham. And the story of Abraham begins all the way back in Genesis, I think it's Genesis 11 when God speaks to him the first time. And I want you to see this as a source of hope because way back in the very beginning, do you know what God says to Abraham? Before he says any of these things, God says to Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. When God said that to Abraham, Abraham was 75 years old. 75 already. And he says, I'm going to make you a great nation. But at that time, Sarah was already barren. She could not have children already at that point. And God says, I'm going to make you a great nation. And then we go all the way up to Genesis 15. And then it says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid. How many of you are afraid this morning? You don't have to raise your hand. You're afraid about some things? Well, let me just go ahead and give you a verse for that. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound or a strong or a self-disciplined mind. That's 2 Timothy 1, 7. 2 Timothy 1, 7. And why do I say that? Because Abram was afraid. Is God going to keep his promise? Don't be afraid, Abram. I am your shield and your great reward. You see, when you and I think, will it be, can it be, God reminds us and reassures us with his word. I want to say something to you this morning. Some of you are afraid. Some of you are fearful. What if this happens? Some of you are going through troubles right now, and that's the next step. So, and, and we know it's to be patient in affliction or patient in troubles, and you're afraid it's never going to end, or you're afraid it's going to turn out badly. May I say to you this morning, if fear is filling your heart, guess who didn't give it to you? 
God didn't give you that because God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. Who gives us a spirit of fear? The devil. The devil. And if you're battling a spirit of fear this morning, you say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this spirit of fear. God, I go to your word and I stand on your word and I reject this fear that is trying to take over my life. I reject this fear that's gripping my heart. I reject this fear that's keeping me awake at night. For Lord, you have given me what? power and love and a sound mind. So don't be afraid. And that's what God says to Abram. And it says, after this, the word of the Lord came to Abram. So remember, we talked about this before. God always gives us something we can stand on if we're hoping in him. And if you look when it says after this, do you know what just happened in chapter 14? You say, no, what happened? Well, we don't have time this morning, but you can look later. In chapter 14, <laughs> Four kings defeated five kings and they kidnapped Lot and they took everything and they went off and God put his hand on Abram and Abram, a single man, not a king, had no nation, one man with his household servants went out and defeated four kings without any loss of life, without any loss of anything. How was that possible? Was Abraham so great? No. God was so great. And the things that you face and the things that you're struggling with, it's not in your strength. It's not in your power. It's in God's. It's in God's. So these things that you're, you're fearing, these things that you're worrying about, plug into the source of hope. Plug in. And God, through Abraham, God wins the victory. And then it says, after this, the word of the Lord came and he says, don't be afraid. I'm your shield. I'm your great reward. You see, God gives you something you can trust in your life, and then he keeps on working with you. So if you're struggling this morning, look back and see what God has done already. Amen? See what God has done. And Abram is still struggling. He says, but, but, but I don't have a child yet. I don't, I have no, and, and then it goes forward. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Remember we talked about this as well? Where do we get a foundation? Go to the word of God. If you're, if you're, if you're struggling with hope, it's hard, get to the word of God because that word of God, it speaks into our hearts. It speaks into our souls. And the word of the Lord came and he said, a son will come. And then the Lord himself takes Abraham outside and says, look, count the stars, so shall your offspring be. You see, God speaks his word to our hearts, and then we have hope. Then we have hope. Some of you say, but I don't have hope. I don't have hope. You need to get with God and let his word be spoken to your heart. And once his word is spoken, then you've got something you can stand on. Then you've got something you can cling. And then we go all the way, 1,500 years later, and it says in Romans 4, Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Isn't that a great verse? Isn't that a great verse? You see, this is why we can have hope. Here's the source of hope. This is the God to which you are connected and to which I am connected. And then it goes a little bit further. Oh, and you say, ah, oh, here we go. He's not just the father of faith. He teaches us about hope. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. Amen. Hoping against hope, some translations say, according to what God had spoken. How many of you are feeling hopeless this morning? Go to God, get his word for your life, and then it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. It doesn't matter what your situation is. You can have hope not because of your circumstances. You can have hope because the God who raises the dead has said, it shall be thus. And then we've got something to stand on. And you don't have to be afraid. Amen. 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 Boy, you think your situation is bad? A Abraham was 100 years old. He was as good as dead, and so was Sarah. <laughs> and so was Sarah. Get the word from God and then stand on it. Abraham was fully convinced God is able to do whatever he promises. Are you convinced of that? Amen. Amen. I think of Lighthouse. I'm, I'm preaching individually, but I want to talk about Lighthouse just a minute too. 
28 years ago or so, God spoke a word and he said in this area, I am going to raise up a lighthouse. That was God's word. And we are here today. And so we have gone through some tough times in past years. We're going through some tough times now with finances. Some of you may look around and you may be a little bit discouraged because you think, well, this person's gone. Well, why did they leave Lighthouse? They've stopped serving the Lord. Or maybe they've gone to another church and, and, and despair and discouragement starts filling your heart as well. What I want to say to you this morning is I reject that. Because he has spoken his word. He has spoken his word. And I believe that God is able to do whatever he promises. Amen. And I am praying for this church. And, sh and so should you be. Whatever we go through, God has given us his word. Abraham was fully convinced. And so after waiting patiently, he received what was promised. And then we read in Hebrews, it is this anchor for our souls. He waited patiently. Do you need an anchor for your soul? I do. I do. Hope in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. And so Abraham, our poster child, waiting patiently, he received what was promised. He received the child that God had promised. What has God spoken to you? Have you received it? If you've not yet received it, you keep holding on. You keep praying. You keep waiting patiently. And that brings us to our next one. God bless those, blesses those. And the second one is patience in affliction. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. For when they have stood the test, they will receive. And we talked about this two weeks ago. Patience in affliction. Jesus said to us, in this world you will have many troubles, many troubles tribulations, trials, Sickness, injustices, unfairness, broken hearts, disappointments, all sorts of things. And we will have that. We will face that because we're in a broken world. But Jesus says, but be of good cheer. Why? I've overcome the world. I've overcome the world. And Jesus overcame the world, not just so he could say, hey, look. I'm the victor. I'm the victor. Jesus overcame. Every sacrifice Jesus made, He did it for you and for me. Every battle He fought, He fought it for you and for me. Every victory He won, He won for you and for me so that you and I may endure patiently, so that you and I may fight the good fight of faith whatever it is, in whatever area. Jesus went through it first so that we too may go through it. We, we have the same enemy Jesus had. And Jesus says, okay, let me handle him because I can beat him. And he did. He defeated sin, death, and hell. And then Jesus took all of that and he made it available to us. Therefore, beloved, wait patiently. Therefore, endure through the trial. Therefore, don't give up in the middle and say, ah, oh, forget it. It's too hard. Don't lose what God has won in the hard times. He has won it. He has won it. And if you'll endure patiently, you will receive and I will receive what he has won for us. You will always receive. And here's how we can do it. We can do it because when we make it through, we will receive. We will receive. Don't throw away your trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance. And then you will receive all that he has promised. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. And this was our passage again, Romans 5. We rejoice when we run into problems and trials. And you say, oh, 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 oh. why? For we know that they produce endurance. Did you know? Do you know? Hold on to it. It produces. But go all the way through. Hold on to God and let him get you through. And this hope doesn't disappoint. Who's our poster child for, who's our po poster child for endurance? Some of you this morning would say, <laughs> I'm the poster child. Let's look at a Bible poster child. 
Moses. Look at this with me. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded suffering for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Isn't that great? Isn't that encouraging? Here's Moses. He could have had an easy life. He could have said, I can do this, but you know what? He went through the suffering and he went through the hard time because he said, what I'm going to get at the other end is of more value than this trouble. It weighs more. It's better. So when you go through trials, hold on. When you go through trials, remember Jesus is with you. When you go through trials, remember it's worth it. When you go through trials and the devil wants you to feel like God doesn't love you, you're all alone. Remember that Jesus is with you and nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ah, look at 2 Thessalonians 3, 5. May the Lord direct your hearts to God's love and Christ's endurance. As we go through hard times, may, may your heart be directed. God, you do love me. You haven't given up on me. And to Christ's endurance. He went through it first, right? And he went through it, why? Just for himself? No, he went through it for us. How are we going to run this race? We're going to run with endurance by keeping our eyes on on Jesus. Look at him and then you won't become weary and give up or lose heart. Who, what was the joy set before him? For you and me, the joy set before us sometimes is, whew, when I get through this trial, the joy set before Jesus was you. We talked about this. It was you, that you would make it. Brothers and sisters, be patient in affliction. Be patient in trouble, every type of trouble every type of trouble. And then, how are we going to make it through very quickly? Who's our poster child? I'm just going to jump right to it. Who's our poster child for patience, uh, for, for faithful in prayer? Elijah. Elijah's our poster child for faithful in prayer because what's going to bring it all together and what's going to, how are we going to receive all of this? It's going to be through prayer. And we talked about this last week. So this is the freshest on our minds, right? This topic, because we talked so much about this last week. And if you haven't heard the message yet, oh, I urge you, go back and listen to it about being faithful in prayer. Many, many more scriptures, but we're going to look at our poster child. Right before this, chapter 17, Elijah goes to Ahab, the wicked king, and he says, it's not going to rain. Why? Because Ahab was really bad. And so was, uh, and so was all of Israel. They had sinned against God. And so in judgment, God said, there's no more rain. So Elijah tells him, no rain. And there's no rain for three and a half years. And then after three and a half years, there is the shootout at the OK Corral, Mount Carmel the prophets of Baal and one man, but the one man was aligned with God. And so he had the majority. And he defeats them. We know the story, right? We know the story. What does it say? Three and a half years later, Elijah said to Ahab, okay, go ahead, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of rushing of rain. Folks, this requires boldness in prayer. You know why? There'd been no rain for three and a half years. And Elijah says, there's the sound of the rushing of rain. What? Was there the sound? Was there a sound? Not in the natural. Ahab didn't hear anything. Jezebel didn't hear anything. Israel didn't hear anything. But folks, you and I, when we get in prayer and God begins to speak to us, we have different ears. And our ears can hear things because God speaks to our spiritual ears. And Elijah, who has been praying, says, I hear rain. I hear rain. You and I need to get with God until we hear rain that nobody else hears. You can't see anything, but he hears rain. Ahab goes, eats and drinks. A lot of people just eat and drink, but somebody's going to have to pray it through. Is it going to be you? Is it going to be me? Are there things in this church that we are going to pray through so that we fulfill and receive everything God has planned for us? It's going to take prayer. Elijah climbs to the top of Mount Carmel, bows low to the ground, and prayed with his face between his knees. Have you ever prayed that way? 
I have. I have. It's kind of tough. But it was serious prayer from his heart, okay? So he's praying because somebody's going to have to touch God to bring the rain. Somebody's going to have to. Here at Lighthouse, we're going through at times dry times. Who's going to touch God so that the rain comes? It doesn't just happen. It comes through prayer. We talked about this last week. And Elijah begins to pray. He tells his servant, go up, check. Look out towards the sea. The servant looks, says, nothing. Some of us would stop praying. Oops, I guess I didn't hear the sound of rain. But Elisha knows how to pray, and he's faithful in prayer. And Elijah said, go again. How many times? When would you and I stop? Maybe two, and then I would stop. Elijah goes seven times. Why is, why is it seven times as we, come to, as we come to a close? Why is it seven times? Seven is God's number. And symbolically in the Bible, seven is the number that means complete or fulfilled. That's what it means. You and I, there are some things that you're not going to receive until there's complete prayer, until there's full prayer. Does it mean you pray perfectly? No. It means you just don't give up. You just don't give up. And the perfect prayer, listen, the perfect prayer is the prayer that doesn't give up. It's the prayer that keeps on until it comes. And Elijah prays until. And then the servant says, ah, there's a little cloud the size of a man's hand. How many of you, you see a little cloud the size of the man's hand? Don't, don't stop. Don't stop. And what happens next? Then Elijah says, go tell Ahab, the rain will stop you. You better get on your chariot and go. Why? Elijah has heard the sound of rain. And you know what? Listen, you know what I love about this? Elijah didn't even see the cloud. Who saw the cloud? The servant did, and the servant said, I see a cloud. Elijah says, good enough for me. Here comes the rain. And then we see, I love this, in a little while, the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. Brothers and sisters, hold on, be faithful in prayer, and before you say, yeah, but I'm not Elijah. You know, Elijah's Elijah. He did this. He went up in this. He raised this. He's that or whatever. Before you say that, listen to what God says to you this morning. Elijah was a person just like us. Just like us. You know what the difference was? He kept on praying. He kept on praying. That's the difference. Keep on praying, brothers and sisters, in this year. He prayed. He's just like us. And you know why I'm so encouraged by this as Elijah, as our poster child? Right after this, do you know what Elijah did? He ran in fear because Jezebel said, I am going to kill you because you, you killed my priest. Right after this, he ran into the wilderness and he blamed God. God, I served you and look what's happening to me. Right after this, Elijah said, Oh, God, I'm the only one that, that remains full of self-pity. That Elijah, that Elijah, which reminds us he's just like us. He's just like us. The difference is he didn't stop praying. He didn't stop praying. And so, beloved, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. The devil knows if you ask and keep asking, if you seek and keep seeking, if you knock and keep knocking, you will receive what you are praying for and what God has promised to you in accordance with his will. And he's going to do anything he can to stop you from, from knocking, from seeking, from asking. Let this year in the church and in our private lives be the year that we knock and keep on knocking, seeking, seek and keep on seeking, ask and keep on asking. God has plans for you, good plans. God has plans for this church, good plans. Be joyful in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be faithful in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your word. 
We thank you, God, that you have good plans for us. Lord, we thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear. Lord, we thank you that you are the one that encouraged us to pray and keep praying and not give up, and we would receive the promise that you have given us in prayer. Lord, we look to you. We thank you for your word. God, may your people this year in their personal lives, in their families, and Lord, lighthouse in this year, may we fulfill everything that you have called us to fulfill. May we be a lighthouse. May we receive your full blessing in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God